Good morning from Singapore. Reason 20,961 why I love this place is that it's not a large country, everything is so condensed, and because there's so much food here, everywhere you go, whatever street you're on, wherever you're staying, there's gonna be something good to eat right next to you. And right now, early Saturday morning, nine o'clock, I'm at Northbridge Road Food Center. There's like a billion of these food centers, hawker stalls all around this place. And I am, oh, there it is. Keep so long. I'm gonna move from Kayato, and I heard this, this is where you go, like a really traditional place. This is a place where you go if you kind of want to be transported back in time a little bit. Walking in here, I'm just guessing, this place hasn't changed in the last 50 years. The cooking method is really simple. Toast on a hot grill where the coffee and the tea is being warmed up as well. Condensed milk, kaya jam everywhere. And this place is really known for kapi goyo, which is coffee with butter. I don't usually drink coffee, but I do, do like butter. Never really thought these two um, kind of went together. This is strangely creamy and delicious. You don't taste a lot of the butter like you would if you've been into like a butter sandwich or something. So here is basically used instead of a creamer and it's got that layer of fat floating on top that makes the coffee slightly bit more creamy than usual. And this coffee is good. It's already got the condensed milk in here. So I'll make sure to give that a nice mix. And for someone who doesn't really drink coffee, this is really creamy, yolky, and yummy. Of course, when you get kaya toast, you gotta get it with a couple of soft boiled eggs. Just put some soy sauce in there, some white pepper, mix it up, and go toast dipping. Mm, there's really nothing like having kaya toast dipped in soft, velvety eggs for breakfast. And kaya toast, if you guys don't know, it's the king of all toast. I kid you not. No other toast is as yummy than this toast. Toast here is soft and inside layered with kaya jam and pieces of butter. This is like taking relatively simple breakfast items and just making them extraordinary. I mean, it's just toast and jam and butter, but when you dip it into perfectly cooked soft boiled eggs with that dash of soy sauce to give it that additional umami flavor and a hint of white pepper for that extra little zing, you'll start to wonder how you ever really just had plain toast and eggs. Now the thing with this place is the toast is not extra crunchy. It's more of a soft toast with a slight char on the outside. The eggs are cooked perfectly. It's so gooey, silky, and soft. This is just a testament of something that's simply wonderful, you know? Relatively simple ingredients and components that present it in a uniquely delicious fashion. And I'll be 100% honest with you guys, like I do prefer the toast at Yakun more than I would here because the toast over there, it's really, really crunchy and the butter is more melty and they bring it out to you piping hot. So you do get more of a texture element with that toast. But for me, eating food is not solely about the food. It's where you're eating it. It's really the overall experience and having been able to walk into this eatery that, like I said, it's like stepping back in time because nothing has changed the way they cook and just watching a family who's been here for decades just doing what they do in their zone and being able to sip up the tradition and the history in between sips of butter coffee you can't find this experience anywhere else i don't think i've ever finished a cup of coffee before in my life until now <sighs> Yesterday, I wasn't really planning on filming a video, so I was just walking around with my cell phone. Found this amazing Hanani's chicken place. I think it's better than Tian Tian, the place I usually go. So here's that video. Sorry about the audio. I only had a cell phone with me. I need something from you. And I need something new. Oh, I got things to prove to you. And I know what to do Oh, you're moving with the lights They follow in the night You're always doing right I see you watching too This chicken rice place is right across the street from my hotel I see it going to the gym every day Didn't think much of it Came in this morning Of course, I don't have any recording gear except for my, my camera right now. This might be better than Tin Tin Chicken Rice.
This might be the most tender chicken rice I've ever had in my life. That meat is just racing to fall off the bones. Oh my god. Barely need to chew that at all. A little chili, a little ginger. Eat it with some rice and get all that great chicken stock flavor from the rice. I mean, the rice is good enough to eat on its own for sure. And this may be one of the few times in my life where the chicken is actually more tender than the rice. I think this is my new favorite Hainanese chicken place. I've been trying to find like a like an alternative to Tian Tian because every time I go there, it's like an hour wait. And I think I found it. Chicken is so tender. I'm pretty sure the song Love Me Tender is about this chicken. Or it would have been if I was ever came to Singapore and tried this dish out. I just got an extra plate of um, breast meat, so I didn't want to deal with the bones. Even the breast meat, juicy. Borderline don't have to even chew this. Love it. Seriously, if you don't want to wait in line, come here and try this place. Sometimes when I eat food, like one thing just leads to another. So after the uh, Hanani's chicken, I really wanted some laksa. And this place is not that far from me as well. It's about 10 minutes drive. I've been missing it since I first had it. First time I was in Singapore, it's Sungay Road Laksa. There's no photos, nothing's allowed. And you're not supposed to eat this with chopsticks. They just give you a spoon and inside. It's just thick, rich broth with little chopped up noodles. So you actually don't need the chopsticks. Pieces of fish tofu, a little bit of clams and Sweet coconut fragrance. One sniff, one sniff, I guarantee you. Mouth watering. Automatic response. This thing's like Pablo's bell and I'm the dog. Oh my gosh, so good. It's perfect in every single way. You got a subtly sweet coconut flavor, perfect amount of spices, good texture from the little clams, the noodles. Those flavors are so deep and when you think you're just like, like sink it in into that whirlpool of coconut and chilies and seafood flavor that crunch of the sprouts just, just pulls you right back up kind of refreshes you so the flavor as rich as it is it's never gonna be too much the spice and the coconut flavor creates like just this intricate balance where the spice hits you and the coconut milk makes everything okay it's just like the combination of the asian parents who beat you and the asian parents who cuddles you but at the end of the day you realize they both love you Chase it with a little lime juice. You get all that flavor, all those emotions, all three Singapore dollars, like a little over two bucks. You can either have this or a sausage McMuffin. Trust me, one of these things tastes way better. It's not gonna make you hate yourself afterwards. Right now I am at Arab Street. This is a really, really interesting part of Singapore. If you don't know, Singapore is like a big melting pot of different cultures. So the cuisine, the culture, Almost got killed by that guy. Like I was saying, Singapore is influenced by Malaysia, India, China. In this area, Arab Street, is where Arab spice traders came and resided in Singapore in the 19th century. So it's a really beautiful little neighborhood with mosques. You're gonna find a lot of halal food and a lot of different restaurants here. And a lot of restaurants by Malay Muslims, Indian Muslims, and just, just walk around this place. It's gorgeous. A lot of alleyways, colorful buildings, beautiful art on the walls. And right now we're going to an Indian restaurant uh, it's supposed to be one, if not the oldest restaurant in Singapore. As much as I love hawker centers in this country, 
I appreciate whenever there's a restaurant with air conditioning. I mean, come on, powered by hot oil, I'm always hot. These are basically thin dough pockets. This one's stuffed with mutton and onions. This one is stuffed with chicken. They look like oversized pizza pockets without the cheese, obviously. They are hefty. I mean, each one, I think, probably almost half a pound, I would guess. The reason I got two is because uh, these are the two most recommended and I, I just can't choose, you know? I don't wanna have food regret, you know? You take a bite of one and you're like, I wonder what the other one tastes like. I don't know about you, but that keeps me up at night. We'll try the uh, the mutton one first. This thing is stuffed with mutton and onions. And you can see the flaky thin pancake wrapped around all those ingredients. On the outside, it's got a beautiful char. And I just wanna say, this is a small. That is yummy. Layers of perfectly cooked thin flaky pancake. This is a meaty, meaty pancake. The mutton is slightly on the dry side, but I'm really enjoying this pancake. You're supposed to dip it in what looks like this sweet and sour sauce. This pancake is so good, by the way. You can eat this on its own. It's flaky, buttery, slightly crispy on the outside, and just tender, delicious on the other side. That tastes better than the mutton. And this is the chicken one. Okay, this actually looks really, really, really juicy. And you smell the curry flavor. It's also stuffed with onions and almost kind of looks like, like curry chicken. And this one, I think I'm gonna have to eat with a fork. Mm. I rarely choose chicken over pretty much anything except for broccoli. This is delicious. These are just some of the most tender pieces of chicken stuffed inside. Mm. Spicy and juicy. Now they gave me two types of dipping sauce. This one that looks more like a curry, they said it's for the chicken. Honestly, I, think, I don't even think this needs that curry. It's just so juicy and full of curry flavor on its own. This is marvelous. The chicken one is much better than the mutton one. I think the mutton one, this might need some of that dipping sauce. I don't really understand this sweet and sour sauce here. I don't really feel like it does much. The curry sauce is way better. I'm just getting maybe like a big daddy of this. But the murtabak in general, especially this pancake, out of this world. Origami. Yes, oh, wow, yes. look at this. You got a darling in, at home or something? I have a darling, uh, maybe in the future. Okay, then I'm, you keep this for her. I'm about to go see my darling duck right now. Okay. Patrick is, is really insightful. I come in and he's like, you're gonna go film that Brace duck, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I check nose. That way? Okay, okay. since I'm gonna be in your shoot. Yeah. That away. That away. This is personalized service. He's walking me to my hawker stall. No worries. Uh, <laughs> you like to do your best. Oh, that's it. It's a long line, yeah? All right. Good luck. I'll see you next time I'm in town. Yeah. Okay? God bless you. Take care. Funnest grab driver on this trip. He's a really funny guy. He told a Tom Cruise joke in the cab. I didn't get it on camera. Tom Cruise would have appreciated it. I guess we found a parking spot. <laughs> I'm gonna be presumptuous and say, this is gonna taste cracking amazing. Take a look at this gorgeous plate. I mean, this is more sauce than rice and duck. Covered in a thick gravy, the duck morsels are glistening, juicy. And just look at the rice. This is not even like juice from the duck and gravy kind of like mixing in with the rice. This is the gravy drowning the rice. They give you a little side of tofu, half an egg. This is a set meal, some peanuts. First thing I'm gonna do, just taste the duck on its own. A little duck meat, douse it in some chilies. Run of applause for this duck place. This has got some mighty duck flavor. Mighty ducks. I'm sorry. 
I love that movie. You can taste the duck. Perfect with a little chili sauce, a little citrus, a little spice. The duck itself is not the most tender. It's not gonna taste all fluffy and nutty in your mouth. It's not that type of duck. It's chewy and with all that great juice, aroma, and flavor coming out, every single bite you take. That rice is almost better than a duck. It's not a mushy rice. Every grain stands out with a heavy, deep umami flavor just soaked in completely, drowning the rice. Pieces of tofu, golden brown on the outside, beautifully white inside. This is basically me living in the Midwest as a kid with a deep tan. Golden brown on the outside and white on the inside. It wouldn't be funny if it wasn't true. Second is soaky tofu, again, with that great marinade. That tofu is great. You guys need to come and get this. Ain't nothing like this. Ain't nothing drowning in this crazy umami sauce like what's in front of me right now. And this broth they gave me. Ooh, that's an herby broth. I'm not super digging this. Oh, this egg. It's a soy sauce egg. It looks like an uber tea egg. But the outside, you can see this little layer that's invaded by the soy sauce. Mm. As much as I love the duck, and as good as the duck is, there's a reason why it's called a duck rice. The rice tastes just as good, and it's just as important of a component as the duck. You guys know the intro song to Married with Children? You can't have one without the other. Falcon rice, that's how they fly high together. I give this a solid 8.5 or 9 out of 10. This is gonna be your song, and I guarantee you, after you're done, you're gonna wanna hit that repeat button. Patrick got me a cup of coffee. Cheers, buddy. buddy uh you got a good one. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. Is there butter in this? Yeah, but still, yeah. That's uh, condensed milk. Uh, no, yeah. butter. no butter? No butter. That's traditional. Mm. Also, what's crazy about this, this whole plate, $5. Five Singapore dollars, about three fifty, for this massive plate of duck rice. There's also a three Singapore dollar option. That's like two bucks. Economical, delicious. My favorite two words when describing food. Can't walk by some durian and not get it. Let's get let's get some. Hi, good. Yeah. Mm, that's great. Brilliant. I didn't know you could try a durian before you buy it. Mm, this is so creamy. See what I like about fresh durian in here? Mm. It doesn't smell nearly as bad as like the frozen one in the US. If you want to grab a durian to go, they basically wrap it up in like five layers of plastic for you so the thing doesn't smell. Can't even tell you got wet gem socks in here. The next place I'm going to is pretty far away. I'm at Nanyang Technical University. This is probably one of the biggest universities geographically I've ever been to. Walking from just like one section of the campus to the other and not even far away from each other is a solid 15 minutes. But luckily they have all these like walking paths so you can avoid the sun and it's really pretty. Probably only in Asia do you go back to a university for food. Never do that in the States. But all the canteens on campus is open to the public and they got really good food inside. So this place is pretty remarkable. I mean, a typical university cafeteria in the US, you got your pizza stations, you got your salads, you got your entrees, whatever. And coming here, it's got everything from Sichuan food to Xiaolong Bao. So basically there's everything in here, except for an air conditioning. So it is just oh, atrociously warm. And I'm here for the ayam pinyet, which is an Indonesian fried chicken, more specifically from the Java region, which I've been to in Indonesia. And this is something I heard you gotta try in Singapore. And this place here in this university, supposedly, is one of the best places for this chicken. The chicken with a little crumble on top. This chicken is served with curry rice and sambal on the side. It's supposedly the way they make it is, is they smash it against mortar to make it much tenderer. If it's cooked done right, very crispy on the outside, extremely tender on the inside. Oh, wow. That's one of the crispiest fried chickens I've ever had. I mean, getting here was rough. I had like a couple of different Ubers that went in the wrong direction, but one crunch from that chicken made it all seem worth it. I didn't expect 
a lot from all this. I got here, it's about two o'clock. Nobody's here. I mean, this is relatively empty for this place. It's the end of the rush hour, so I figured there'd just be some leftover fried chicken that's no, not crispy anymore, probably a little dry. This thing is the opposite of all of that. The skin is golden crispy. The meat on this chicken is way more tender than your typical fried chicken. You guys see how easily this thing is breaking apart. This would be barely scratching it with a fork. Now to kind of give it a little dunk in the chili sauce. Eat it with, with a little bit of curry rice. This, along with the duck, my favorite two things today. And the thing with Asia is they don't really ask you like, do you want it spicy or mild? There's only one spice level and it's burn your tongue off. The chilies are so spicy with a splash of citrus. Curry is creamy aromatic with the rice. All that combined with that amazingly crunchy, juicy chicken. No wonder people trek all the way to this place for this dish. This is a fried piece of tofu. Mm. If you look up the definition of contrast in the dictionary, it should be a picture of this tofu. The crunch on the outside and the softness on the inside, it's so wonderfully different. This is like the jackal and hide of all tofu. That chili sauce is like an Asian parent. It's gonna hurt you, but it'll be for your own good. All right, I gotta go back to the hotel and take a shower. If I can somehow call an Uber to come all the way here to get me. Uh, and then I got one more place to go tonight. I can't wait, it's gonna be magical. Last place I'm at, JB Ameng. And this place is one of two restaurants in Singapore that sells white pepper crab. So of course, Singapore is known for the chili crab, right? We have the chili crab with the black pepper crab, amazing. Never had a white pepper crab. White pepper is mainly used in Chinese cooking, so I'm expecting this is gonna be a little more Chinese flavors, but I have no idea. I'm so excited, got three things. Um, stir fried clams. When you see the words garlic and clam, you order that. No thinking, just order it. And then they're famous for their JB San Lo Mi Hong. It's like a rice noodle. It's burnt or something. So this right here, it smells a little burnt. It's basically burnt meat and burnt rice noodle. Uh, I see some eggs. I think there's some uh, squid in here as well. I can't stop sniffing. It's kind of like I don't know, it's, kind of like, it's almost like sniffing glue. You just kind of get addicted to it. So it's really not really burnt. I mean, it's slightly, slightly charred, but it's actually really tender. When you break through the surface, you see the middle. It's actually really, really soft, gentle noodles. So you can uh, add some chilies to it, put some chili sauce with it, and kind of eat it like this. Mmm. This is so good. This is some of the greatest noodles I've had in Singapore. And I've had some great noodles in Singapore. Wow. Oh my God. Because they're thin rice noodles, they soak up every ounce of flavor. We taste the seafood running, running, coursing through every single strand of noodles. You don't taste any of the burntness that you're smelling. I feel so bad for the other noodles I love in Singapore because I'm a multiple noodle lover. I can't, you know, I'm just like giving out my love to like noodles left and right. And sometimes that doesn't feel right. Just does, just like love found. 10 out of 10 of those noodles. And look at these little babies. Little clams with garlic and scallions. Oh my God, perfectly tender. And it's so fragrant and garlicky. Here's the best way to eat this. A little clam. Chase it with some noodles. Oh, no, that's complete. And finally, this is the white pepper crab. Ooh. Yeah, you definitely smell that white pepper on this thing. Starting with the joints. This is my favorite part of any crab. It's the most worked muscle and most tender part. All right, this crab tastes way more Asian-y than like a chili crab or like a black pepper crab because the white pepper is something so, used so much in Asian cooking. And as much white pepper as they used in here, and they used a lot, it really goes to highlight how sweet this crab is. Basically, when you're tasting the crab meat, you don't get like an overpowering flavor from the white pepper. You taste a succulent sweet crab meat, and then afterwards you're like, huh, my tongue is a little numb. And that's the white pepper, people. 
basically the flavor is not as powerful as the black pepper crab. It's more subtle, but it is more fragrant. I still like the black pepper crab better from my memories, from my experience, but still, this is phenomenal. I think today, overall, best thing I had, these noodles here. Hands down, best thing I had. Then is the duck rice. I love the fried chicken. I feel like the food gods really shine down on me, you know? Like, I was paired with really interesting, fun people during my drive. They brought me to really cool places I didn't find before, but this meal will wrap up my food adventure today. And guys, if you like these t-shirts, if you're a hot pothead like me, or you're powered by hot oil, check out the t-shirts down below. Also, please hit that little bell thingy. I would really appreciate that. As always, all the places I went to listed down below for you. Thank you all so much for watching. Until we eat again. See you later.